I'm the Ben Crazy, and this is NASCAR Sim Racing by EA Games. And in this video, I'll go into the history about NASCAR Sim Racing and why this was EA's only attempt at a simulation-based NASCAR game. I will also go over what makes this game so special and different compared to EA's previous console games and the simulator of choice during that time, NASCAR Racing 2003. On September 26, 2003, EA announced an exclusive relationship with NASCAR to develop NASCAR-branded racing games through 2009. Pretty much, EA and only EA would be able to make NASCAR games until 2009. EA would no longer have to compete with other companies to develop NASCAR racing games, as well as it mostly allowed them to include all of the tracks and drivers without the hassle of individual licensing that they would have otherwise had to deal with. Enduring relationships with standout sports organizations like NASCAR allow EA to deliver the authenticity, simulation, and competition that fans of EA Sports brand have come to expect. On NASCAR's side, it was their belief that this would help grow NASCAR to younger fans. EA is a sophisticated marketer, and their creative advertising and promotional efforts will help NASCAR to continue to attract young fans which is an important part of our overall growth strategy. Although this was great news for EA, it was disappointing news for Papyrus, the developers of NASCAR Racing 2003. It's unfortunate that the relationship with NASCAR had to end. We did some high quality work, but now it's time to move on. It would not be long after that Papyrus and Sierra Entertainment would be shut down by Vivendi Universal Games. At the end of March 2004, due to EA's agreement, the last of the NASCAR racing series was pulled from store shelves, and on May 28, 2004, Vivendi Universal Games, who owned the NR2003 source code at the time after shutting down Papyrus, sold it to a new company. This company was called First.net. Formed by NR2003 Modder Group Project Wildfire and previous Papyrus employees. First.net would eventually change their name to iRacing. And funny enough, on October 5th, 2023, nearly 20 years later, iRacing would acquire the exclusive license to produce NASCAR games on consoles and on PC. So due to the forced departure of Papyrus, the door was open for EA to try their hands at stock car simulation for themselves. Instead of using the same game engine used in their previous games, they decided on using the G-Motor game engine, which is the same one used for R-Factor and one that was built with sim racing in mind. They brought over game assets from previous EA NASCAR games and on February 15th, 2005, they released NASCAR Sim Racing. Reviews for the game were very positive with GameSpot and IGN praising the game for its realistic physics and graphics. EA has not only closed the gap, but they have exceeded Papyrus's efforts in many significant ways, such as the excellent physics model, featuring drivable oversteer, third-party extensibility, and just about every option imaginable. NASCAR Sim Racing is beautiful to behold. When run at its full graphical prowess, the game looks at least as good as the best NASCAR simulation to ever hit the market. From sim racing fans though, the comments were less than stellar with users reporting many gameplay issues, physics bugs, and not feeling like a simulation. NSR is horrible. Aside from all the gameplay bugs, there is a physics bug involving the cars having the wrong kind of differential that allows you to slide around corners with little effort and tends to make the game feel more like World of Outlaws than a NASCAR title. Plus, regardless of what EA has said in the past year and a half, it is still using the same old ISI engine that their previous NASCAR and F1 titles used, and shares all of the same quirks. I've got the game, installed it, and then uninstalled it a day or so later. I'm with you. I purchased it, installed it, played it, and returned it the next day. So far, I've yet to get a race using the flag rules on where things did not get completely screwed up. To me, that is pretty major. Rules and flag problems in a racing sim can kill a game for me. IndyCar Series 2005 anyone? To me, bugs like these are just a little more than a minor annoyance. Throughout 2005 and 2006, patches would fix many of the issues that users were experiencing, but by then, 
the sentiment between sim racers was clear. NASCAR Racing 2003 was the superior simulator. Although there was no competition on the store shelves, EA failed to win over the hardcore sim racers still playing NASCAR Racing 2003. And because of that, NASCAR Sim Racing would be EA's last NASCAR game released on the PC. EA shut down their online servers for NASCAR Sim Racing in 2006, while Vivendi Universal Games would shut down their online servers for NASCAR Racing 2003 one year later in 2007. So after learning about the history of the game and seeing the opinions from Sim Racers back in 2005, I wanted to try NASCAR Sim Racing for myself. How does it really compare to EA's console games, and is it really that bad compared to NASCAR Racing 2003? Well, for one thing compared to NASCAR Racing 2003, it was much harder to get this game working on modern hardware. Getting the game running required a beta software update for the game, as well as a setup file from an older EA title, since the setup file that comes with the game did not run on Windows 10 at all. It took me a couple weeks of troubleshooting and tweaking to finally get the game running consistently and at a higher resolution, yet I was still unable to get the game running at any other aspect ratio than 4x3. Once you get the game running though, you'll see that NASCAR Sim Racing is a weird blend between the EA console games and NASCAR Racing 2003. Looking at the menus when you're in the cockpit, NASCAR Sim Racing's use of the F keys to view the race and car info is very similar to NASCAR Racing 2003's F keys, with the only difference being that you can now stack the windows in NASCAR Sim Racing. The layout of the UI also seems to take some creative liberties from NASCAR Racing 2003. As far as driving, it definitely feels right in the middle of an arcade and a sim experience. It's not so arcadey where the car is plowing in the turns, nor is it so realistic where the car would immediately spin out on you if you should dare to get loose. It is very playable on the controller, which is something I cannot say about NASCAR Racing 2003, and there's plenty of controller options available to fit your driving style and how the controls feel. When the race starts, you can decide to pace with the field manually or hit the spacebar to immediately get to the start of the race. There's also an option to enable and disable controlling the car when entering pit road. If you want to see a cool move you made or a massive crash that you caused, there's an instant replay button you can press to immediately watch what happened. And at the end of the race, you can save a full race replay, although the replay system is not as comprehensive as NR2003. There's also a career mode that is very similar to the console games, allowing you to be a driver or an owner that works your way up from the truck series to the cup series. Now there's no mistaking that there are some issues with the game. On the audio side, the AI engines are way too loud, making it hard to hear your own engine. Depending on the track, the AI can be either too easy or too hard. They will sometimes slam on the brakes randomly, causing you nose damage or the crash. Lastly, even after the patches, the flag rules are still not correct, leaving me to just keep the yellow flags turned off. More of a compatibility issue with running the game on modern hardware is that the default track setups are not available. I had to drag and drop the setup files into my players folder in order to see the default setups. And even then, for every individual session I load into, I have to manually go into the garage and select the correct race setup. Otherwise, it will not apply a setup for the car at all. And you know what? Even with all those issues, overall this game is just fun to play. Yes, those comments from 2005 were true in that the game is not a full-blown simulator like NR2003, but it is a step up from the console games, at least in my opinion, and a great middle ground for those that were looking for a more realistic game, especially compared to the console games that were out during the time. So if you're interested in trying the game for yourself, or interested in trying out other sim racing games, go to my website www.bencrazy.com which is linked in the description below. I thank you so much for watching, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button, and once again I'm the Ben Crazy and I'll see you later. Ben Crazy out.